convection. This is convection is really the only way that heat will flow through air. Uh, you have, it has to be moving, right? Um, air is, of course, a fluid, right? Liquids are fluids, gases are fluids. They both can flow, remember? Okay, it's much faster than conduction through air. Um, and basically the idea is this, is if you have a hot object like this, it gets surrounded by this little boundary layer of, of warm air. And that, that, that little warm uh, air that surrounds it sort of insulates it, right? And so what happens is, of course, by natural convection is that, it, is that um, warm air is lighter than cold air. And so the warm air will tend to float on the cold air and you'll get these little convection currents, right? Um, if we put a fan here, let's draw a picture of a fan, right? Right, we can strip that uh, boundary layer of warm air off of this hot object. That's my hot object, right? And it will cool it even much faster than natural convection, right? Um, an example of this, um, I used to teach kids, we would, we would take saunas and then, uh, uh, you, know, you know, we'd have the sauna cranked to like 215 degrees or something like that Fahrenheit. And the kids would sit in there until jumping into a cold lake sounded good. And this is not frozen. This is like the lake is probably 38 degrees or something. Uh, and what you do is you run out into the lake until it's like up to your belly button. And then you just crouch down and sit absolutely still. And, and you'll be surrounded by this warm layer of water. Uh, and you can sit out there for, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. Uh, but, you know, if, if, if somebody jumps in right next to you, um, they'll strip that away from you. Um, so, so convection is the stripping away of the warm air, right? Car radiators, right? Uh, um, the, basically, it's a it's a way to you can water flows through the car radiator, and air flows through the little holes in the radiator. Um, that's that's planned convection, right? Uh, uh, computers have cooling fans. That's convection, right? When they talk about wind chill, like it feels as cold as that's the additional cooling because of um, of convection, right? And then a firestorm is, you know, a special thing, right? You've got a uh, forest or, God forbid, you know, buildings or something like that that are burning, right? And what happens is the air is flowing in from the side and the, the warm air is floating on top of the cold air, right? And you get basically the air as it blows in, there's this positive feedback loop. The more the air blows in, the hotter this fire burns, the hotter it burns, the more the air blows in. Um, and I think it was the Tillamook burn in the 30s, you should look it up, right? There were burning chunks of trees landing on ships 30 miles at sea, right? So this storm was going up to the top of the troposphere and dropping cinders on ships way out in the ocean. Um, so next time next time you go to uh, uh, Cannon Beach, stop at that uh, wayside rest, and there's a little thing about the Tillamook burn. Um, and then, you know, personally, uh, when you put a windbreaker on, the reason you feel warm is not that it's insulating you from conduction it's that it's preventing convection okay that's what they do uh, we can look at some of these right so here's a, you know, a lightweight wind shell um, you know hiking wise whether you bring a separate shell or it's, you just use your rain gear uh, most of us use our rain gear um, but there you go right so the wind shells that's what you use to stop convection this by the way is north face it's a pile called wind wall and they, they've got a layer in there that's impervious to wind, and so it's it's a windbreaker and a puffy, uh, but it's not as clammy as one of these things. Um, is that all you need to say about convection? I think it is.